Thank you. 
Let's let's not make this complicated. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very good. Thank Who you very much. Who are you? My name is Alex Nowitz. Yeah. And I'm a vocal performer and composer. Um, Sometimes I don't know which one comes first, but uh, I guess it's kind of equal. And um, the first time I w when I was coming to Stein was uh, in October 2007. And since then I was working on, uh, on a setup for live electronics, which I used in uh, different concerts, uh, many concerts actually um, so far. And we're right, um, or in midst of the process of creating a complete new setup or electronic instrument, if you want, if you want to say so. You're a composer as well as a vocal performer. What was your, what's your training? I was uh, trained in many ways, actually. Um, Okay. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, David. Can you, can you tell us a bit about who you are exactly, where you come from, and why you're here at Stein? My name is Alex Novitz. I'm a vocal performer and composer at the same time, so to speak. And I come from Germany. I live right now in Potsdam, near Berlin, working in Berlin most of the time. And um, I, I was uh, doing I was doing performance until now for 20, 20 years now, um, as being a singer. And um, I composed uh, different kinds of uh, works, like uh, an opera work, often full evening uh, length, uh, uh, lots of straightforward chamber music. And after finishing a very intensive uh, period of straightforward composing, I said to myself, I need some sort of a break. And that's exactly the time um, when I was coming the first time to Stein, which was uh, in October 2007. And since then, I had the opportunities um, um, with uh, the support of Stein to uh, develop an own kind of um, setup um, or live electronic setup, which helps me, first of all, to reflect um, the compositions I've done so far and also to reflect um, my vocal approach towards performances um, in a way that I can in a way that I can look onto my work um, as if I'm looking into a, a mirror. And yeah, so what do you, what do you, what, so you say you wanted to, you're using the design or the new instrument or making a new instrument as a way to reflect on your singing as well as on your composition. You, can you be a bit more specific about that? What does it mean when you use an, you know, a, an instrument to reflect? on your compositions of the past? Well, um, if you're involving sample techniques, 
And what kind of music were you, were, you, were you composing when you were composing? Um, that was straightforward compositions, like, uh, like uh, string quartet, okay. string trio, music for singers, a cappella, um, solo singers, um, what else? Piano music, you know, Just for, uh, all kinds of uh, what you call, uh, which is called classical yeah. uh, uh, genre, uh, but contemporary, of course. Or opera, which was a full orchestra and full choir and 14 solo singers and uh, theremin, piano, harmonium, toy piano, all these kind of uh, instruments which are available on, on, the, on the classical contemporary scale. And after I, I finished this period, um, um, I, I thought by myself, well, I need a sort of a break and, and the live electronic world gives you the opportunity to um, look onto this um, um, uh, work you have done. Uh, you sample your compositions and you, you construct them again by deconstructing them and, and, and uh, you have the, 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 the possibility to look at uh, these or to reflect these um, from a complete different angle. So you're actually, uh, some of you end up playing live using the sounds of your own compositions in a new, completely new context. Exactly. Right. So if I'm using pre-recorded material, it's only uh, my, o my own compositions, which I wrote in the past, um, as opposed to another approach, which would be um, taking all kinds of uh, music available, um, which is uh, the approach of a DJ, of the DJ culture, so to speak, um, I'm, I'm trying to focus or limit myself in that uh, um, degree that I just use my own stuff. Well, tell us how you tell, tell us how the process started when you so you you, know, you wanted you wanted to take a break and you started thinking about a new instrument. What was your starting point of your thinking? Well, um, it started actually more by now. <laughs> um, um, when I came here the first time in 2007 uh, to Stein, I, I, um, Start again with when I came here. When I came here um, um, the first time to Stein, which was uh, in 2007, um, I actually had no, no much clue uh, about uh, life electronic and its possibilities. Why, how did you, how did you, why did you come here then? Well, well, I, I knew about Stein, of course, and uh, for instance, I played with Tony Buck in, in the 90s in, in his rock band Astro Peril. For instance, I played uh, in the rock band of uh, Tony Buck, which was uh, Astro Peril, and we played in Europe in the 90s, and he was using, by that time, he was using um, uh, the sensor lab system and okay. incorporated that uh, in his uh, uh, drum playing. That's how I knew Stein, and, uh, um, or I met uh, Nicholas Collins. Um, that was uh, the early 90s in Berlin um, during a festival at, um, uh, which was called uh, Pfeifen im Walde, whistling in the woods, uh, and he was curating that. So uh, I knew about the, uh, that Stein was existing and that there are uh, very interesting uh, uh, instruments out there. Let me to repeat the question. What was the question? How did you end up? No, how did you end up at Stein? Right? He, he was in the middle of telling a story about how he was meeting Nick Collins. How, how, how did I m meet? How do I know Stein? Yeah. Something like that. I don't think that's so important. Do you no. think? Well, <laughs> well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah. okay. Well, well it's, it's, you know, mm -hmm. um, you needed a break. I was going to say, like you, had, you were telling this argument for a long while before you. Uh, <laughs> so you met these people and they said to you, you know, go to Stein. Why, why did they send you to Stein? Because it's just like a place that, 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 allows, uh, that you thought would allow you to experiment? or. Well, actually, nobody sent me here. I just came deliberately. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, well, if you have worked in a, in a specific genre and, and very intensively, like for the last year before the opera premiere, I was just 
writing, you know, notes on a uh, black dots on a white sheet of paper, as I would call it, and and constantly, you know, every day, like eight hours, so to speak, and um, that was qu kind of tough. Um, and then you need some sort of uh, uh, some 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 sort of change, actually, and. Uh, and I was always um, um, uh, observing and following up the, the um, processes at Stein and what's happening, what's new, what's, what's out there. I knew that John Rose was uh, dealing with uh, lots of devices and, and Tony Buck I played with in the 90s. He was dealing with a sensor lab in the 90s. And so I knew about the activities at Stein and I was always very curious um, um, uh, what could be the potential for me as a uh, vocal performer and composer um, if I um, would have the opportunity to, to, to work uh, with the staff at Stein. And, and so how, 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 what happened when you got here? Well, first of all, um, I, I went through the usual kind of process of the orientation workshop, so I got to know all the uh, possibilities uh, at the moment, and that was uh, in 2007, um, and very at a very early stage, uh, Frank Baldi was presenting um, uh, the Wii's and the Wii remote controllers, um, um, and that's what I was getting very much interested in because they are wireless, they are small, they are ha easily handleable. And um, I tried out different uh, things with uh, different setups. We, we developed um, a very easy setup to um, sample my uh, voice and to use some pre-recorded sounds. And then I slowly got into uh, uh, this field, into the setup, and then we did different setups. So um, I was also a bit under pressure, I must say. Uh, at that time, because th one reason why I came here was also a theater piece, which uh, uh, was done 2008 in Berlin, which was the premiere of the, the, the German premiere of two uh, pieces by uh, one was by Mark Ravenhill and the other one by Martin Crimp, two contemporary contemporary British authors, and for that reason I was asked by the director Thomas Ostermeyer to incorporate some sort of new d electronic devices in, in this work. So um, it was good on one hand to come here uh, and to explore different stuff. At the same time, I had some sort of a deadline. I had to come up with something at the end, you know, and, and uh, which was um, already in spring 2008. So I had okay. uh, only a few months uh, to, d to develop um, um, something. Um, but it turned out that what, I, what, what we developed here together was um, pretty substantial. And, and what was it? What did you develop here? Well, uh, at that time, I was already using two Vs to control. Uh oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the first setup um, was already, mm, or no, let's let's put it differently. Um, in my first setup, um, I was already using two Wii's, and one Wii remote controller is um, a, is actually one instrument. So I was playing with two instruments plus the voice. What do you mean, two instruments? Well, one. Uh, when, when do you call something an instrument? Mm, once you can manipulate sound with one controller at a time, and at the s simultaneously you can control um, some other sounds with the other controller, then you're already playing with two instruments. Yeah, but then why is the piano then one instrument? Because. Uh, That's a very good question, actually. Um, 
I could play with the Wii's, let's say it like this, with one Wii, one piano, and with the other Wii, the other piano, right? So two different pianos. Um, uh, let's no, but I'm, I'm let's curious, you say, it, you, know, you, you say that you have two instruments. Mm. So there must be something going on. You know, there, 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 there must be a strong, set of strong sense of independence then, probably. Yes, absolutely. Did, were, so tell me, were they two different instruments? Were they, you know, two copies of the same instrument? Mm -hmm. um, what makes the instrument an instrument? Um, basically, the two instruments are, in um, in terms of strat strategy and in terms of organization, uh, uh, in terms of organizing <laughs> in terms of organizing the, the, the buttons, the switches, they are pretty much the same. However, um, the playback options, they differ slightly. So, um, but um, as I said before, one controller is addressing one sample buffer, let's say, or one uh, particular sample, and the other one is uh, addressing another sample. So you cannot so play the same sound with the two controllers? Yes, this I could do. This but you'd have, to, you have to copy the sound, or do they both look at the same sound? They, they, they are looking at the same sound, but they are, um, let's say, acting differently. Because Do you tell me the difference between this and a piano? Because um, both your two hands are working on the same keys. You have two controllers working on the same sound. And still it feels different to you. Yeah, uh, it does because, um, the c well, it's difficult to apply the concept of the piano onto the concept um, of, of, of um, uh, a kind of a new electronic instrument. Because, um, especially if you look at it on, um, from a standpoint uh, of sampling sounds, uh, the, the concept of piano is about playing uh, 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 precise pitches, uh, playing scales, melodies, and that kind of stuff. And if um, you approach it differently from like um, playing back samples, straightforward playing back uh, um, and, and manipulating that or scratching through the sample, um, going backwards, that's a complete different uh, concept. Um, and therefore, it's, it, 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 it's kind of um, difficult to compare those two um, um, uh, concepts to me. But um, it feels different to play one Wii uh, at the same time with the other um, because uh, the result can be so different, you know. While as if you play the piano, it's it's mm -hmm. always the same sound, uh, but even if you use the same sample as as a as a resource, um, you might get a complete different result. Either it, I'm applying uh, one we or the other we. Does that kind of uh, answer your question? Yeah. Um. Well, the, the, but what I find interesting is that basically the fact that you say, well, you know, to me it feels like I'm doing two different things. Mm -hmm. and that's probably what makes you say they're two different instruments. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the essence of your instrument? Are, you know, are, are, they, are they the same instruments, by the way? They're different, but they, 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 like two instances of the same instrument? Or are they two different instruments? You know what I mean? Uh, no, they're basically the same, okay. uh, but um, since the right and left um, brain, as we all know, uh, behaves differently, it's, um, it's kind of makes it difficult um, to play them um, properly. Because the left hand, for instance, I'm a right-handed uh, uh, person, uh, the left hand is, is most of the time pretty uh, mm, passive, let's say, while as the right hand is very active. So it's like, um, in compositional terms, it's like playing, it's, it's, it's actually better to, to talk about two different compositional uh, levels, 
instead of uh, talking about two, two instruments. different uh, instruments. Um, so in, in counterpoint, the right hand or the right we, what that is addressing um, is, is sort of the cantus firmus, so the leading voice, so to speak. And, and, the, and all, all the, the, the sounds the left hand is um, um, generating, this is more like a sort of accompaniment or more like a, like a, like a layer underneath. But that's the way you play them. It's not built that into the instruments. No, that's that's the way I uh, personally play them, or uh, I prefer to play. Yeah. 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 But tell me, tell me a bit more about how you how you how you how you actually design the instruments. How you know the process of coming up with these instruments. Well, I actually I did not design it. First of all, um, I had several ideas, but I was actually more or less taking over. Um, possibilities, options um, which were presented by um, by the staff uh, 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 at Stein, basically, and I was just um, working in my ideas of how to approach this new instrument. Because you have to know, this was a complete, not completely new uh, area. Because I in, in the early 90s, I was of course playing with different. Uh, electronic devices such as delay effect or, 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 or any distortion or whatsoever, you know. But, uh, but in, 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 in a, on, a, on a digital uh, or uh, regarding the digital uh, area, um, I was pretty uh, unexperienced at that time when I began um, to study the possibilities of uh, um, different setups. So your instrument consists of what? What are the components of your instrument? The components are um, two Wii controllers, um, Junction, which is a, a software created at Stein, which is the connectivity software, which uh, detects every movement made by the uh, arms and the hands through the Wii's. Then I use ELISA, short for uh, live sampling, which is another program created at Stein. And I'm using a computer through all uh, these. Um, uh, I'm using a computer where all these programs are um, um, linked to. And also a mixing board and an interface for, for diverse yeah. routing um, uh, aspects. But the essence of your instrument is the two Wii controllers, Junction and Lisa. That's the essence, yeah. yes. Yeah. And so you, when you came to Stein, you had some rough ideas about things you might want to play with or experiment with. Um, you saw everything here. You know, you've got demos from all the people here, different software packages. Did they at some point give you a setup like, here, try this? Um, here's a microphone, here's a Wii controller, play with this? Yes, yes indeed. Um, and how was that set up? Um, what was the setup of your first? Well, I was experimenting a lot with um, straightforward uh, junction setups by Frank Baldi. Um, and those setups were simply addressing a synthesizer. And you, you could, because I had some background in, in synthesizer music in, in the 80s and 90s, of course. And um, or some, some I had some uh, experience with synthesizers. Uh, so I learned to how to, um, to transport this, this concept to the Wii controllers and what's possible in there and how could you alter that and how could you, what is, what is the new step in, in terms of uh, musical uh, uh, progress? What are new um, ideas in, in that concept? So I did um, study those uh, examples Frank made. Um, and then I always was very interested in working in um, or incorporating uh, my own voice and, 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 and to record that uh, instantly right at the moment of performance. And, and um, I figured that's a very nice way of extending um, the, the actual vocal performance on a 
platform of life electronics. This was 2007? This was 2007, 2008 already. Okay, well, yeah, we're now, it's now 2009? Yes. What, has, has your setup changed? Has the, the internal working of your instrument, has that changed though, you know, between yes. then and now? Yes. How, is, how has it changed? Um, the internal setup um, uh, of my instrument has changed gradually, meaning I always added new features to it. So I was playing with, with, with um, let's say, with instrument one. Well and I, I be, be more specific. Mm -hmm. How has your instrument changed? Like, what features? Well, I, um, I worked, once I had the first instrument, I worked on the playback options a lot. So I, I went into Lisa and, 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 and um, studied the possibilities of such and um, uh, I created new manipulation options. And, uh, and I was constantly actually uh, working on the idea of getting synchronicity between movement and uh, generated sound so that um, the audience can sort of follow what I'm doing. And I, I, did, I did really focus on mm, the idea of controlling the volume and making that obvious to the, to the, to the audience. Volume is just one parameter in music, but uh, it's, it's very uh, important that you can see um, how uh, uh, volume is actually um, um, achieved. And that's a simple uh, arm movement for, uh, which goes up and down. It's very banal, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, in, 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 um, in the performance act, it's, it's actually crucial um, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And what's, what's other, so, so how, what, 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 what kind of setup did you end up with that you felt comfortable with, that you, spent a lot of time performing with? Um, well... Uh, you performed here at Stein last year, at the Jamboree? Yes. Uh, what kind of setup were you using there? <coughs> was that a stable setup or was that still, oh, were you still tweaking things? Or? Well, the setup uh, I was playing at the Chamb Chambore in Stein 2008, end of 2008 was already pretty stable, yes. Um, it was, um, it has, I had, to f I had to still fix some little issues, but it already gave a, um, a confident feeling um, to me as a, a performer. Um, right now, if I look back uh, this year, um, there were actually one step in between, um, and that's, that's the instrument I'm playing right now and uh, what we did, and I worked a lot with Daniel, Daniel Shono on this setup, uh, we created another sample buffer which allows me to jump uh, back and forth. If what, hap what happened in that? Buffers. What happened in that, uh, you worked with Daniel, how did you work with Daniel? What were your, you know, what were your conversations with him about? Tell me a bit more about that. Well, uh, our sessions with, um, my session with um, my sessions with Daniel were always um, uh, uh, we were starting off always with uh, discussions actually what was actually fulfilling in the past what options were actually doing what I was aiming for and what actions were or what options were kind of um, irrelevant to to my approach um, so we were discussing all these kind of areas. And then, um, of course, Daniel is, is, is very experienced in this field. He always has to um, make su suggestions um, um, and, and, and how to progress that. And, of course, I have very um, 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 how do you say, distinct ideas of how to get it further. But um, still, I'm learning. I'm still in midst of a, a, a learning, in, in midst of the learning process, I still have to uh, get more um, knowledge about the possibilities. What could do the thing for me in the end? You know. But do you have do you have then always 
a specific idea of I want this kind of sound or this is what I'd like to do with my voice how can I do this or are you more of a play around type of person where you say oh I'm gonna you know I'll, I'm gonna use this for a couple of weeks I'm gonna play with this feature or I'm gonna see whether I can use this particular part of the software um, what's your what's your approach I guess I it's probably uh, kind of in between or or it's probably both um, meaning I have specific distinct ideas but um, um, the way to get there kind of leads you to other um, areas uh, or leads you to other ideas um, and um, so it's it's probably both. I, of course, I explore uh, stuff which I'm mm, not used to and try to get s something out of there. But um, it's it's kind of you you develop something. Sometimes you develop something you haven't thought at the beginning, and that's kind of a, a, a nice thing to surprise yourself all, all on the way to um, the development. And at a certain point, you come back to the initial idea again, and you kind of lost the initial idea, you know, in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, that's the way it is, I guess. If you learn new, um, an, uh, if you learn how to use a new environment. How long are these interviews going to be? The the past and the existing setup. Well, the, 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 you know, the, 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 I, what I what I'd like to do is basically to say, you know, you had an instrument a year ago, you you performed with it, um, but you're gonna have to say this soon. Uh, you even won a prize with it. Is that pretty much the same setup as you were? Yeah. Working? Yeah. So now you're back here. What the? Why? Why are you? Why are you here now? Yeah. Okay. What is the next step? And then I'd like to start talking about, you know. Okay. 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 It's cool. You said you have a you had a quite a stable setup at the end of 2008. Um, what happened after that with that setup? You had a, you had an instrument or two instruments, you know, uh, the two controllers. Um, did you did you do a lot of performing with it? How many times did you how do you, you know how many times you performed in 2009 this year over the years? I think I performed about 10 or 15 performances. I did 15 performances in the end, uh, 2009. Um, I didn't count them, actually. I have to look it up. But I think um, estimating uh, the amount is about 15 performances. Um, I did it many times um, in 2008 um, during uh, the theater piece City Cut in Berlin. So there were lots of performances of such. And then I did a lot of um, solo concerts where I was using um, the live electronic setup as well, which was uh, the Warsaw Autumn, for instance, or the Vilnius Festival. Um, all they were all happening 2009. And recently, um, uh, at the ICM in Gothenburg, where I was presenting a new piece. Um, so um, I had a, a lots of um, uh, opportunities uh, to, to, to play with it and present it to, to an audience so far. What's the ICM? ISCM oh, is the International Society for Contemporary Music. Uh, and um, that was a competition concert uh, organized by the ECPNM, which is the European promoter of new music, which is sort of a collab, collab kind of um, community of uh, organizers of new music festivals of Europe. And 
So I have uh, p p plenty, plenty of time to, to actually play the, the instrument. And, um, and I was thinking all the time, all the only finger I'm using to play these instruments, that's the thumb. You only play with the thumb. Now, if you have a pianistic background, it feels kind of dull to use just the thumb all the time while you have uh, uh, learned certain skills uh, uh, on, every, on each finger, right? And so the reason why I'm here again at Stein um, is to find um, a, more, um, a more delicate solution towards a more pianistic approach to uh, play the new instrument. So um, we, ag we all agreed on the fact that we um, want to create um, an, an instrument for my needs uh, from scratch. And um, of course, um, uh, to do that, you need to, to find uh, a hierarchy of, import of what are the important, most important things. And it's still, um, on, on the very top, it's still um, the issue of freedom. And that's what I like about the Wii's. They give you total freedom in movement. They don't hinder your uh, performance act. They, um, they are wireless. This is and, they're, uh, and, and, and the controllers uh, are, you can handle them very easily. So that's that's the um, aspect which I'm uh, very fond of too. But you're, you're Ha <laughs> ha! 